Sarah Farman, Part 8 After Sarah's grandmother passed, she and Jeff stayed at the farm helping out as long as they could. Eventually, they had to get back to their employers and start working again. Jeff went back to Howe Street and Sarah to Shell Hill. It was very difficult now after being together and working together all day every day for more than two weeks. They did not want to be separated now. They discovered they were having feelings for each other. Back in Shell Hill, Sarah felt a loneliness she had never felt before. She kept thinking to herself, I've never felt lonely before. Why now? But she was. It seemed life was so dreary. She had a wonderful job. It was a sunny day, and she now had a boyfriend. Hmm, a boyfriend. More like a soulmate. Yes, that's it. I'm in love with him, and he is so far away. I should have seen this coming. I feel so good when he is around. Oh, misery. Day after day went by, and she could only think of Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. She called him, and talking made her so happy. He would come up on the weekends when they could and spend time together. After about six weeks of feeling miserable when he was gone, she made up her mind. She needed to move so she was closer to Jeff. She was not certain where this was all leading, but she was sure of her feelings. She talked to her boss. Her boss agreed to see if there were any job openings at the regional offices near Howe Street. It turned out there was an opening that suited Sarah, and arrangements in the company were made. After all, better to accommodate such a brilliant rising star than to let her get away. They needed people like Sarah. The older people in the company were retiring at a high rate, and they needed new talent to step in and step up. Sarah fit this qualification perfectly. The regional offices of Simpson Fainer Wearables PLC beckoned. She would no longer be working in a branch store. She was going to work directly for wearables. She called Jeff. He was so happy. He had known that one of them must move soon. Pressure was mounting. He just couldn't figure out how he was going to do it yet. Now Sarah was coming to him. The long distance relationship was very hard on him too. He was thinking over the idea of getting married and knew they needed to spend more time together before he could take that plunge. Messy breakups were scary things, and he had no intention of making that kind of mistake. He knew he loved Sarah, but he wanted to be sure it would be for the long haul. Some of his friends had gone through breakups, and he wanted no part of those messy, painful splits. They decided Sarah would come up on the weekend, and they would look for her new housing together. It needed to be near Howe Street, of course. Plans were made, and he would meet her at the station. She left Shell Hill on the 1006. She was glad Jeff offered to help her look for a place. There he is. She practically leapt into his arms. She said, did you have a good morning? He said, it was the longest one I can ever remember. I'm glad you're finally here. They hopped into his car and headed to Tilling Cup Estate Agents. The lady was very nice and after they explained what Sarah was looking for and also explained no, they were not going to be living there together, she looked up and said, I have just the thing, and I think you will love it. It's just around the corner. We can walk. When they got there, Sarah said, this looks a lot like my flat building in Shell Hill. The agent frowned. They went up and she unlocked the door. 
inside the flat after a quick look around. Oh, Sarah exclaimed, it seems perfect. I do love it. They worked out the details and Sarah had a new home. She had loved her flat in Shell Hill so much and this one really reminded her of it. On moving day, Jeff borrowed a van and they moved her stuff from Shell Hill. It was a long day. She had started accumulating things. On Monday, she got a phone call from a solicitor. He said her grandmother had a will, and she was in it. Could she please meet him at the farm as soon as possible? To be continued.